In this video, we'll discuss how blank samples are used in ELISAs and what to do if your blank samples return higher than expected results. Blank samples are samples that allow you to determine the background absorbance and are usually used in a blank correction step, in which the raw values of the blank samples are subtracted from the rest of the samples on the assay. These samples don't receive sample or detector antibodies and help control for any variation or contribution of the plate itself to the measured optical density. Blank sample location on the plate is important to ensure an accurate representation of the background absorbance. For example, if there's variation of precision across the plate due to measurement technology, perhaps a blank group is included on each row or column. Other options include a dedicated blank group for each sample, or a blank sample at each corner of the plate. The most appropriate option will depend on the type of assay you're running and the measurement technology in use. For more information on designing your plate layout, please see the video link in the description. Blank samples are expected to return the lowest signal values on your plate, with values approaching zero. What happens if your blank samples return higher than expected results? High blank samples could be indicative of a sample preparation issue, such as improper plate washing or potential contamination. If your blank samples are much higher than expected, once the blank correction is performed, it could cause the curve to appear below the x-axis. At first blush, this can be alarming, but a negative curve can still produce the same concentration results as a positive curve. Because all samples have been corrected in the same way, the whole curve shifts down the y-axis, but the computed concentrations are the same. This may seem counterintuitive, but if you imagine all samples being shifted down the y-axis by the same amount, you'll see the x-axis values are not affected. Therefore, the computed concentrations will remain the same if the blank is zero, a low value, or a high value. This first data set demonstrates an example of an analysis performed with a high blank value, 1.801. You'll see the curve appears below the x-axis with negative y values. You can also see in the sample table excerpt below negative background corrected results. This next data set displays a more expected blank value of 0.01, so the curve appears above the x-axis with positive y values. The sample table shows positive background corrected results. Comparing the two datasets, you'll see that although the appearance of the curve is different and the blank corrected values are different, the concentrations have remained the same. So if the overall concentration is not impacted by the result of the blank sample, what's the point of including blank samples in performing a blank correction? A main reason for blank samples is to simplify comparing curves across assay runs. In a perfect situation, this will generate a nice looking curve through y equals zero, although as any laboratorian will confirm, this is rarely the case. While a high blank won't necessarily affect the concentrations, it should be cause for additional investigation to ensure the assay has been performed correctly and has not been contaminated. To begin troubleshooting, the first thing to check is that the plate layout matches the layout currently being used in your assay. If your layout does not include a blank, be sure the blank correction step is not being performed using a sample erroneously labeled as a blank. If the layout is correct, review the assay protocol for errors or potential contamination. If you continue to see issues with high blank values, it's recommended to reach out to the kit manufacturer directly for additional information. If you have any questions about blank samples and ELISAs or tools available to assist with your data analysis, please email us at support at myassays.com.